Hi guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel and this is my September wrap up. So September was a pretty good month for me in terms of reading. I read an outstanding 10 books, which is probably the most books I've read in one month in such a long time. And I discovered some of my new favourite books this year. So without further ado, let's go and talk about them. So one of the first books that I finished in September was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. So this is a YA contemporary and it's all about these two girls whose fathers were on a plane from New York to the Dominican Republic when it crashes into the ocean. One of the girls lives in New York and the other girl lives in the Dominican Republic and we follow them as they try to cope with the loss of their fathers and there are a few twists and turns along the way which I honestly wasn't expecting but this book was such a beautiful story and it's all about love and loss and sisterhood and friendship and it was just really really emotional from start to finish. This is the first book that I have read by Elizabeth Acevedo and it's written in verse which was a very unique read for me. I've never read a book that has been written in verse before but it really worked for this one and I think the way it was written really helped give the story much more emotion. It really packed a punch and I loved every second of it. I gave it five stars and honestly I can't wait to read more by this author. The next book that I finished was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. So this is a book that has been on my TBR for such a long time and this book was incredible. It was an instant five star read for me. It was just so emotional so educational, so real as well and I honestly think everybody should read this because even though this book is fiction, the events that take place in this book are based on events that happen to young black Americans pretty much every day throughout their lives. This book follows this young girl called Star who is in the car with one of her best friends when they get pulled over by the police. Her best friend is shot by a white cop and then we follow Star as she tries to come to terms with the loss of her friend while also dealing with the racism that surrounds her and the black community and trying to get justice for Khalil. And this is a really important book to read, especially with the things that are happening in America and around the world right now. And honestly, I learned so much from this book, even though it is fiction, like I said, it is real life for a lot of black people around the world. And it taught me a lot about microaggressions and racial prejudices and also the justice system in America. And yeah, like I just could not stop listening to this book. And I think the narrator of this book, um, on Audible did an absolutely incredible job. One of the things I really love about this book so much as well is the way Angie Thomas writes her characters and the way she writes family dynamics and the family that Star is part of is so complex and they have so many different things going on but it felt really recognisable, like I could really relate to that family dynamic and they had such great interactions with each other. It was just so beautiful to read. I loved every single character in this book. And I think Star is an absolute role model and she's so sassy, she's intelligent, she's not afraid to stand up for what she believes in and it was just such a good book. Then I read four books by Matt Haig and I'm not gonna talk too much about these because I have done a reading vlog where I talk about all of them individually um, and you can go and check that out if you want to. It is quite a long one, I do apologise, um, but I had a lot of fun making it and I 
was very, very surprised actually because I made some predictions about which book was going to be my favourite and I was totally wrong. So we have The Radleys, which was all about a vampire family trying to live as normal life as possible and these two vampire children find out they're vampires and it's all about them trying to navigate that. I thought this one was going to be my favourite but it was okay, it was a three star read, it wasn't the five stars that I was expecting it to be. It was definitely a very unique take on the vampire genre um, and one I would recommend if you want a vampire book that's different to everything else. It had its funny moments, um, but it just didn't live up to the expectations that I had for it, unfortunately. Then we have The Possession of Mr. Cave, which is all about this man whose mother has died, uh, his wife died, and then his son tragically dies in an accident. And so he becomes very possessive of his young daughter, Bryony, and he does everything in his power to try and keep her safe and to stop her suffering the same fate as the other three members of his immediate family. This one was a very uncomfortable read. It was very voyeuristic. I felt like I was intruding on something very personal, very private, and I didn't really like the main character in this one. I'm not gonna lie. I thought the things that he did were very outrageous but then again that's the point i gave this book three stars then we have the last family in england which was another book that i thought i was gonna absolutely love i was really really excited for this one this one is a shakespeare retelling of henry the fourth and it follows this dog called prince who's part of a pact called the Labrador Pact and it's their job to keep their families together to protect them from any dangers and there's the Springer Spaniel uprising and they're kind of like the villains of the piece but this book just didn't live up to the expectations that I had for it unfortunately. I was pretty bored through a lot of it, like don't get me wrong, it had some really fun moments, some really standout moments that made me howl with laughter and I love that it was written from a dog's perspective, that was so different, but it just... It was just really underwhelming, nothing happened, I didn't like the way it ended, and so I ended up giving this book two stars. Then we have The Dead Fathers Club, which really, really surprised me and is my favourite of the four. I absolutely adore this book, and honestly, I could talk about this book all the time. It has really, really stuck with me. This one is another Shakespeare retelling of Macbeth and it's about this young boy called Philip. His father's died in a car accident and then one night his father's ghost appears to him and tries to convince him to kill his Uncle Alan because his father believes Uncle Alan killed him. And <laughs> this book was such a roller coaster. I could not stop grinning while reading it. It was just so exciting from start to finish and I love this kid Philip. He is so adorable. I love the way he thinks. He just says things how he sees them. He's brutally honest. And the way this book was written as well just made the story so much more believable and so much more fun. And honestly, this was the best book I've read in September. Five stars. We're moving on to a couple of arcs now. And one of the first arcs that I read was The Night Swim by Megan Golden. So this is a thriller and it's been out for a while actually. I've had it from NetGalley for a couple of months um, and I really needed to read it because I was running out of time. This one centres around a crime podcast and we follow this woman called Rachel who is investigating or researching this rape trial that is happening in the town of Neapolis. And she's using that as the basis for her podcast. And then we follow this girl called Hannah, whose sister, Jenny, had died 25 years prior. Um, she assumingly drowned, but Hannah believes that Jenny was murdered and she enlists the help of Rachel to try and find out 
what happened to her. And I won't explain any more than that because <laughs> I don't want to give the plot away, but I really, really liked this thriller. I gave it four stars. I just, I loved the way it was written. It was quite jarring actually at times because it was written in first person for Hannah's parts and it was written in third person for Rachel's parts. So sometimes it was a little bit like, oh, okay, I'm back to Rachel now, but I loved reading this I was really really interested in the courtroom scenes of the trial um, and I was just so eager to find out what the verdict was going to be. This book also does a really good job of showing how victims of rape are treated after the crime itself and during the trial and how they kind of have to go through it all again like they're raped for the second time it is really heavy stuff so trigger warning if that kind of content upsets you it did upset me actually as well but i think megan golden did a really good job she dealt with it really sensitively and it was really refreshing to read a book that focuses on the aftermath of the crime instead of really graphic depictions of the crime itself then another arc that I read was Little Bones by N.V. Peacock. So this one comes out 31st of October and I'm not one for bashing authors. Like, I feel really bad because it's somebody's work and they've worked so hard on it. It's their baby, it's their life, you know, but... I would not recommend this one, unfortunately. I went into this thinking that I was gonna get something really creepy, something really dark, really suspenseful, and it just wasn't that, unfortunately. This is all about this woman whose father was a serial killer back in the day, and he was nicknamed Mr. Bones. And he would make art out of the bones of the boys that he murdered, and this woman was dubbed Little Bones because she was a child when her father was doing this and he would use her to kind of lure the boys into his car. Um, and so she was kind of like an accessory to his crimes. And that plot sounded fascinating. I was like, oh my gosh, this book sounds perfect for this time of year. It sounds really dark but it wasn't. Instead, what we got was this really overdramatic, unsurprising kidnap story. And basically this woman, she's called Cherry, she goes to this psychic who says to her that her son is in danger. And then when they go to this Halloween fair one night, um, her son gets kidnapped. And it's basically all about her trying to get her son back. And I've read thrillers like that before and they were quite good. But this one, it just, it didn't interest me. And I'm really annoyed that I spent all this time reading it because the end was just so predictable. And I hated Cherry as a character. She was just nasty to all the people around her. And yeah, you could argue that the pain and the desperation that she was feeling of losing her son and wanting to get him back uh, factored into that. And I can see that, but it was just, it was too much. And I was really let down by this book. The way this book is described does not represent what it's actually about. And I'm annoyed. All right, and so the last book that I read in September was Mr. Mercedes by Stephen King. And again, I've done a reading vlog on this, so I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but this was the first Stephen King novel I have ever read. I've wanted to read his books for a while. I thought, why the hell not? Let's just do it. And I was really surprised by this one. It's a thriller, so it's not the horror that he is known for but it was still messed up. Like the stuff that goes on in this book made me feel really uncomfortable at times. And towards the end, it was so tense. I was scared for everybody in the antagonist's like vicinity. And 
yeah, it was just wild. It was quite slow to get going, but towards the end, I was hooked. So this is all about this killer called Mr. Mercedes, who a year prior to this book starting, um, he rammed his Mercedes, or not his Mercedes, someone else's Mercedes, into a group of people who were waiting uh, in line for a jobs fair and he killed eight people. And then we follow this detective called Bill Hodges who was on that case, never solved it, and then he retired. And then he ends up receiving a letter from this guy claiming to be Mr. Mercedes. And it leads to a whole kind of like cat and mouse chase and he's trying to coax the killer out so that he can catch him. And yeah, it was messed up. Like the antagonist in this, Brady, was so fucked up. It was hard to read sometimes, but I loved it. I gave it four stars. Wasn't quite a five because there were a few things I felt were missing, like delving into Brady's mind a little bit more. I would have liked to have seen more of that. It talks about his past, which kind of explains why he's the way he is, but I don't think it justifies it enough. I would have liked to have seen more of that, if that makes sense. And also, I do think the dialogue was a little bit bland in some places. Um, and Stephen King does tend to go off on tangents in this one a little bit. And there were times when I was just skimming over the page to get to the good stuff. But overall, it was a very satisfying read, a very positive first experience with this guy. And I'm looking forward to reading some of his creepier, fucked up stuff because this one was fun. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are the books that I read in September. And I am pretty impressed that I managed to read all of the books that I had on my TBR because... I'm not always great at sticking to my TBRs or completing the books I say I'm going to complete, so we've done a good job there, guys. <laughs> As always, if you've read any of these books, then feel free to leave comments down below Let me know what you thought of them. I would love to hear your opinions. If you like this video, then leave a cheeky thumbs up just so I can uh, know that you guys are watching and liking my stuff. Please subscribe to my channel so you can see more videos from me in the future. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in another video very soon. Bye guys. Thank you.